Alright, sige. So, ayan. So, I'm gonna present. Dira na ko na siya ano, dear Samrag. I-play good kay Basig para makabalok if na-disconnect or wala. So, we'll start first with um, nara. So, this is the last part, no, of katong pre-recorded lecture gahapon. And this is the mnemonics, very important, uh, that is core to parasitology. I believe core siya sa parasitology. One of the mnemonics na core did sa parasitology, especially when it comes to nematodes. All right, please take note of these mnemonics. You have hats, your hoil, the hoil, soil transmitted helminths, no? And then the unholy three or parasitic triad, meaning silang tulog jud ang magkuyog from one, in one sample at the same time. You have hat, hookworm ascaris, and trichuris. And then lastly, you have exhibits heart to lung migration. You have ash, no? Ascaris, strongy, and hookworm. So please take note, ano yung mga mnemonics, ha? Gas, gas na gas, gas na yarn. And sige na na siyang balik-balik. And very, very core, very important, no? To parasitology. Okay, so gahapon, no, nagsugod na to siya sa mga naglantaw. <laughs> I feel like wala pa yung naglantaw. Uh, <laughs> sa inyohang um, nematodes, no? So again, nagsugod na with Ascaris, and then Trichuris, and then followed by the hookworms, and then Strongy. Ang muto na discuss gahapon, na sa pre-recorded. So again, nigawas po sa, in sa quiz bowl. I was really happy na nigawas siya. <laughs> Infective stage of your Strongyloides, Sir Corales. But remember pa or nakalantaw ba infective stage of strongy Hilary form nervy friends galit current chara <laughs> so tama Hilary form larva or the L3 larva so same sila og infective stage with their hookworm same pod sila og mode of transmission so ganito mode of transmission nilang dua it's both skin penetration all right, very good. Skin penetration. Okay, direct penetration. No, um, usually unprotected feet. Kanang magtiniil, mula kao, no, sa soil and all that. Okay, and then for Ascaris, of course, the common names. Don't forget, unsay common names sa tung Trichuris, Trichura. Nala. <laughs> Press the buzzer na ako. Unsa? Your. Unsay common name sa Trichuris? Your? Your. Whipworm, sir. Okay, ayun. <laughs> uh, medyo matagal. Shout out. Whipworm. Okay, very good. Whipworm because it resembles a whip. No? Marcia Glatigo. Okay. Alright. Tapos, um, okay, hookworm and strongy because they have the same eggs, diba, in appearance. So, they're indistinguishable in terms of egg morphology. So, in order to differentiate the two, we look at their Larva, no, both rhabditiform, the L1, and the L3 filariform, no. So for the L1 rhabditiform, di ba, ang satong ginalantaw is the buccal cavity and the genital primordium, di ba. So buccal cavity for your hookworm, di ba, dako siya o, ba, ba, ang hookworm, di ba, you can remember. And then, gamay siya o, genital primordium, or gamay siya notch, di ba, ganun. Whereas ang strongy opposite, gamay siya mouth, or small, or short, iyahang buccal cavity, Whereas the genital primordium is prominent, no, or large, no. Ayan, so dax siya, dako siya. Okay. And then for, for filariform larva, we look at the tail, diba? So for hookworm, it's pointed, diba? And again, your strong G, ihang tail kina I slit, na siya notched tail. Ayan, so maraming notch, diba? So, diba ka, kita mo ato, ato mnemonics ato kay dax, si strong G, at my notch. Pero ganahan mong bastos, bastos, dax ang notch. Strong G can learn. Okay. So that's how we remember atom mnemonics for larva. Okay. All right. Sigi. So um, also, Trichuris, Trichura, don't forget, diba? Characteristic egg, diba? Football shape, uh, ni? lantern, Japanese lantern appearance, and Russian sisig plot. <laughs> Dina, ka, di, I cannot unsee it. <laughs> After na share na ko to na meme, probably to siyang sisig platter siya. Okay, all right, sige. So we now go to your next nematode, and that is your Enterobius uh, vermicularis or, or your Oxyuris vermicularis. So Oxyuris vermicularis is the old name of Enterobius vermicularis, and um, you're all familiar with this naman. So common name, as you can see, spinworm, seat worm, social worm, or society worm, because this nematode has familial or group tendency. What do you mean by that? If one is affected or if one is infected, then it's possible that the rest of the group 
and the rest of the family is also affected, okay? So if you treat one, okay, in the group, you also should treat the other members. Because again, it's expected or it, it is possible that the rest, you no, know, or all of the group members, all of the family members are affected. Ayan. So that's for um, enterobius. Okay, now habitat, as you can see, large intestine. The final host, Kekitaman. Diagnostic and infective stage, both embryonated egg. Okay, so again, diagnostic infective, diagnostic stage are the stages of the parasite that can be recovered from clinical samples, all right? And infective stage, again, the stage that infects or that causes infection. So possible na ang diagnostic stage or infective stage, same, same ra, okay? All right, now infective stage, again, embryonated egg. So take note of that, embryonated pa rin. Okay, now mode of transmission, as you can see, naghan siyang modes of transmission, but the most common is ingestion. No? Ingestion of embryonated egg, okay? Ingestion of common. But aside from that, it can cause, uh, you can also get it from inhalation and external auto-infection. So inhalation because your eggs are lightweight, no? But it's lang ma-airborne, okay? So um, especially that the eggs also can cling, no? Pwede siyang mutapot sa inyong mga linens, mga bed sheets, no? Or sa clothes, no? So let's say naglimpyo naglimpyo ka sa mga room and then nagpagpag ka no imong gi ana uh, imong bed sheets or clothes so nang lugpad ng eggs no so pwedeng ma-inhale sa uban that's why your enterobius can have a group or familial tendency because again uh, pwedeng ma-infect pa ng uban all right so that's inhalation aside from that auto infection external so it's opposite sa auto infection sa strongy because your strongy internal iyahang auto infection so meaning Sa strongy, sa sulit palang daan, the larva of strongy will penetrate the intestinal mucosa and then move, spread to the organ. So that's internal auto-infection. So auto-infection, it's the same host, alright? Gikan sa same host, ang parasite yapon, no? So nagbalik-balik ra within the same host, ang um, infection, that's auto-infection. Pag external, sa enterobius, no, nigawas pa, nigawas ang parasite, okay, but nibalik na gyapon sa same host. So example, di ba, later when we go to the life cycle of enterobius, if you can remember then, the eggs are deposited in the perianal region of your host, no? So, of course, that will cause itchiness, no? Mag itchy na daw ka, <laughs> so charot. Katul sa, no, itchy. So, imo siyang i-scratch, of course, and uh, after scratching, usually imo siyang i- Mag, mag, yung siya smell. So, ayan, inhalation, di ba? So, external auto-infection. So, nigawas siya siya sa body before siya ni-infect balik. Okay? So, that's external auto-infection. Okay, so that's for the modes of transmission of enterobius. But again, the most common is ingestion of infective eggs. Okay, alright. Now, we go now to the adults. As you can see, adults are quite similar than with the other nematodes na na-discuss. Um, females are still larger, okay, compared to your males, alright? And their anterior end, as you can see, they have what we call a cephalic ali, all right, or lateral, lateral wings, all right, because maras lag mga wings, okay? And these lateral wings or cephalic ali, wala pa naibal ang kung siyang function, all right, but they are believed to be uh, structure for support, no, structures for support, okay, all right. Now, the male, as you can see, little, mas gamay siya compared to females, ayan, women empowerment, amen. All right, so male, it will die after copulation. And then females, of course, sila ang produce eggs, all right? And as you can see, ayan, as a picture, this one, this is the tail. It's really pointed, all right? And it resembles a pin head, no? So when you say pin head, no? Pin, no? <laughs> ayan, very sharp pointed pin head. That's why it's called a pin worm, all right? Ayan, pin head. Now, of course, uh, maburo siya pag fertilize a male, all right? So it will go out again into the perianal region to deposit the eggs, all right? And after depositing the eggs, the worm will die, okay? All right, ayan, CD. So, adults, again, are found on the intestine, mostly sa cecum, all right? And a single female can lay up to 11,000 eggs, no, per day. So, imagine if, like, uh, daghang worms ang sulod sa Osaka host, so daghang kang eggs ma-produce, okay? Ayan. So, that's for the adults of your enterobius vermicularis. Next, of course, for the eggs, very important, no, and distinct uh, characteristic, D-shaped, ayan, please take note, D-shaped, Football shaped, or it could resemble an Italian bread or baguette ova. Parehas aling nasa picture, di ba? So, kato na mga bread na ginagamit for ano, um, mga garlic bread sa lasagna, ganun, shock na sarap. Okay, ayan, sige. So, elongated, elongated siya, flattened on one side. Okay, so football shaped, D shaped, or Italian bread, baguette ova. Now, double layered, ayan, albuminous layer, and you have an outer, uh, a lipoidal layer. Wala siya glycogen layer, unlike your ascaris. It's embryonated when deposited, meaning paglay sa gawas, it's already embryonated. Nanay developing larva, alright? Already na siya mo infect 
within four to six hours. Unlike your Ascaris and Tricuris, that when it is deposited outside, it still needs to mature mga pilaka days, all right, in the soil. If you can remember, if you have watched the lecture, agapon. Uh, but for enterobius, pag lay sa eggs environment, infective na siya immediately or infective siya within how many hours lang, all right? So it's embryonated when it's embryonated when laid. All right. Now, it contains a tadpole-like embryo. Ang embryo kay safe, same siyang appearance sa tadpole. This is described in Belisario, okay? And the eggs are resistant to disinfection, mga disinfectants, no? But they can, uh, they are not, or they die during desiccation. So kung init, no, mag-uga, yan, mamatay. So makamatay, di ay ang mauga ka. <laughs> okay, buwi pa mga ka. Okay, all right. Ayan. Now, in moist conditions, it can remain viable up to 13 days. All right? Now, there have been cases, there have been also reports that uh, cockroaches, no? There are infestation, no? Of enterobius sa imuhang cockroaches. So, cockroaches could also become a mechanical vector for this, okay? But di kaya common, pero there have been reports, there have been studies na na ay infestation, all right? Um, cockroach with enterobius. So, possible, possible, good. Na mahimong mechanical vector si cockroach, all right? And aside from that, di ba, recall that they are resistant to disinfectants. So, sa chlorination sa swimming pool, pwede lang makasurvive, no? So, imagine na mga bata na maligo din as like kigwa, di ba? Enterobius kigwa. So, pwede siyang spread ang, ang, sana, ang, ang eggs dito. So, ew. Ayan. So, very important lang. Those are the eggs. Take note of the characteristic. D-shaped, all right? D-shaped on, uh, flattened on one side. Football-shaped, D-shaped egg. Okay? It, Red Italian baguette ova, tadpole like embryo. Please take note. All right. So D shape. Napotay D, de ba? Remember paton sa tong D test sa bakte? <laughs> Sir, wala na. <laughs> Unsa na D test sa bakte? Happy tarbo yung micro para compre. Nako siya nasabi ko talaga. All right. So unsa man eh? Your D test sa micro, de ba? It's used to detect inducible clindamycin resistance. Ayan. So uh, to detect if a particular um, a particular um, organism is resistant to clindamycin when exposed to another antibiotic. No, so um, usually partner mong erythromycin. Ayan. So erythromycin, clindamycin, and then if na ID shape na zone of inhibition, di ba? Ayan. So it means that uh, possible na na ay uh, resistance in the future ang organism to clindamycin because it was induced by erythromycin ganun. So, ayan. So, D-test heart, take, take note of that. Alright. Yung bakte, lapit na, micro para, na kompre, laban lang. Okay. Alright. Wait, na pa ko. Okay pa ko, dears? Wala na niyan akong connection. Kulbaan ko. Okay pa mo? Ay, kanang madungan pa ko? Okay pa? Madungan right. na, sir. Okay. Sige. Pa. Okay. Sige. Thank you. Alright. Now, we go now to the uh, life cycle. Uh, sorry. Ayan. So, life cycle insurance is very straightforward. Again, the most common mode is ingestion. But again, aside from that, you can inhale the eggs. Pwede po siyang auto-infection. Alright? So, uh, as you can see, that's direct life cycle. No? When you say direct life cycle, again, wala na siya ni migrate of other tissues. No? So, sa intestine na siya ni mature, produce siya eggs, and then deposit sa environment. Diba? And then... Life cycle goes on, all right? Ayan, by BTS. Shut up. Ayan, so that's for enterobius uh, vermicularis na life cycle. Very, very straightforward, no? Ayan, so most common mode pa rin is ingestion. Okay, now we go now to symptoms and pathology. Of course, it's enterobiasis, all right? Or also na spinworm infection, oxyuriasis, ganun, okay? Now, the most striking feature is, of course, wala nang iba, pruritus ani, all right? Nocturnal pruritus ani, especially sa gabi, eh, di ba? Um, so, pruritus ani, magkatuloy mo globo. Yes, because again, the eggs are deposited on the perianal region or sa kilid sa imuhang anus, alright? And sa pag-migrate po sa imuhang worm, female worm outside, that causes uh, itchiness po and discomfort. So, the patient, again, uh, will experience itchy, no? Uh, katul, katul yun iyahang uh, butthole. <laughs> Ang kilid sa iyang butt, okay? And usually, this infection is common among children. Ayan, among children and especially mga females po. Alright, so children ang mga pinaka-common ani. Alright, now if too much heavy infection, it can cause hemorrhagic colitis. No? So, mag-inflame mo mga colon. Alright, and of course, for females, as I've mentioned, it's common among females. Females, ayan. Extra-intestinal um, enterobiasis is also common, especially sa female reproductive tract with the vagina, uterus, and fallopian tube. Because, diba, the vagina and the anus are in close proximity sa mga females. No, possible na pag-deposit, di ba, sa eggs, sa 
perianal region, pwede siyang ma-introduce to the vagina, di ba? And then pwede siyang ma-involve na ang female reproductive tract. Okay? So, it can cause inflammation there. All right. Now, appendicitis, vaginitis, endometriosis, salpingitis, salpingitis or inflammation of the fallopian tubes, ayan, peritonitis. So, if ever mga ni na possible na mo migrate siya, no? Or ma-spread ma siya to the other uh, organs. And of course, as we have, as we have mentioned, auto-infection, external. Okay? Kaya mo gawas dyan siya before siya mo infect na po balik. Alright? Ayan. Okay. So, again, since, di ba, we have mentioned that the eggs are deposited on the perianal region and it's not deposited in the stool, so, mga common practices to prevent nematode infection such as kanang proper waste disposal or proper sanitation practices are not effective sa enterobius. Because again, the eggs are not found in the stool. No? They are found on the perianal region. So, because nasa sa perianal region, so pagkalibang sa patient, possible na wala eggs or wala yung eggs na ma-recover or gamay lang ang mabutang sa stool. So, the best way to prevent uh, enterobiasis is personal cleanliness and hygiene. Ayan. So, dapat maligo, no? dapat um, mag-change group clothes, ganun. Ayan. Uh, this infection, usually enterobiasis, is common in the cold regions, no? mga temperate regions, uh, US, uh, Europe, because again, bugnao dito, no? so seldom na sila maligo, seldom na po sila mag change of clothes, no? so because again, it's cold, so ayan, so maghaliluya ang imuhang enterobius, kaya mas girag balik balik, di ba? Ayan, so that's the best way to prevent, okay? So it's not similar to your ascaris and trichuris that their prevention is more on proper waste disposal, and proper uh, sanitation practices, okay? But, of course, it's best Japan to follow hand washing there, of course, naman. All right? But majority good, personal cleanliness and hygiene, okay? All right. Ayan. So, that's for the symptoms and pathology of your enterobius vermicularis. Now, for lab DX, as we have mentioned, 5% lang ang survive sa stool, 5% ra. So, that's why the stool is not the specimen of choice for diagnosing enterobius vermicularis. So, of course, as we have already, uh, as you already know, the gold standard, still the gold standard in the diagnostic uh, test of choice is, of course, the scotch tape swab, your Graham's cellulose uh, tape swab, diba? So, you have, I think you've performed this sa public health before the pandemic, so carry pa. Ayan, so at least four to six, no? Four to six negative consecutive na tapes are needed to rule out infection. So, at least four to six. We have discussed this in the first lecture natin. Ayan. So, as you can see, diba? This is how we make it. All right, so again, kilidra. Kilidra sa inos ha, dili insert. <laughs> okay. And this one here is what we call a uh, pinworm paddle collection device. So this is a commercial paddle na gigama na sa Osaka manufacturer. And as you can see, na siya paddle, no? So dili siya pang spam. Charot. Ayan. <laughs> so, uh, kanil siya na paddle. Ang one side ang is kay, ang one side ang kay sticky na. No? It has already adhesive. So what happens is, iwan na siyang ipataput sa side, sa inos. Alright? And then, iwan na siyang examine under the microscope. Alright? So that's where the pinworm paddle collection device, okay? Commercial paddles. Alright, ayan. So, pwede po na siya. Okay, now, treatment, mga azoles pa rin. You're such an azole. Ayan. So, mabendazole, albendazole, and pyrantal pamoint. Okay, alright. Sige. So, that's for enterobius vermicularis. Now, additional notes lang because again, na mga conflicts of interest. Right? Conflicts in terms of kinsa mga mga most common, most common. So, kung most common helminth infection to man, according to HAR, no, katong reviewer na har worldwide it's enterobius but for Belisario especially sa Philippines it's ascaris okay so kinsa man jud atong i-answer ani now according to Garcia iya hang phrasing kay world's most common cause of human parasitic infection or causes the world's most common human parasitic infection enterobius pa rin so how do we uh, reconcile that kun sa natong siya pag resolve what if muni mga questions sa compress sa boards no so just look at the phrasing, no? Um, basta gani, siguro, let's answer na lang basta most common um, nematode infecting man, enterobius na lang, no? Or kung most common helmet infection niya po kay uh, enterobius. Pero if ang question kay most common nematode in the Philippines, alright, uh, then we'll answer Ascaris, okay? So, ayan na lang atong ibutang, no? Basta most common helmet infection worldwide, Ato yung answer na lang ka enterobius. Okay? Kaya daghang references, gayin mo na enterobius. Okay? Alright, sige. And then another uh, additional notes, you have uh, ad, you have a species of enterobius or enterobius gregorii, which is now believed to be a young stage of E. vermicularis. So, katina siyang kabataan days, <laughs> nene days ni ano, E. vermicularis. Okay? So, enterobius gregorii. Alright? So, that's for enterobius 
vermicularis. Okay. So before we proceed to the next, do you have any questions, dear? Any clarifications? <laughs> Alright. Nandiyan pa ba ako? Baka na-disconnect na. Okay. Napako. So di bitaw mo, dear, sa akin. Nakadlo ko sa kong connection din. Is balay. But anyway. Alright. Any questions? Okay. Rana gets lang. Alright. Take note ha. Ito mga phrasing, mga most common, most common. Baka lumabas. Alright, ayan. So you have you have seen nagapon sa quiz bowl. Ina to mga questions po sa boards actually. Um, na iba na word for word yun. Um, na iba na mga kato na questions usually some of them kaya mga practical kayo, practical jug kayo ang uban. Um, especially kaka experience na mag hospital na internship, maragang uban ato ma answer yun, like ma answer yun, no? So ayan. Anyway, uh, any questions before we proceed? <laughs> All right, sige. So, uh, we'll proceed to the next. Again, before that, again, on sa ang mode of transmission for your enterobis vermicularis. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Ingestion. Okay. Ingestion. All right, pwede po. Inhalation. Pwede po. Okay. External auto-infection. Okay, take note of that. So, that's for your, again, enterobis vermicularis. Again, common names, as I have emphasized, please take note, ha, mga common names, memorize na by heart. Okay, dapat dili na yun malimot anak. Kay, one point na yarn. Okay, baka lumabas. Usik, usik ang one point. Shucks. Okay, alright. Baka lang. Alright, anyway. Ayan, sige. So, we go now to the next, which is your capillaria philippinensis. Ayan, sa pangalan na, very, 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 ano na, straight to the point, philippinensis. So, this is, Sariling atin. Yes, be proud. <laughs> this is Capillaria uh, Philippinensis. It was first discovered by Dr. Nilia P. Salazar in 1963. Salazar. <laughs> and it's a close relative of Trichuris Trichura. Actually, they belong to the same family. No? Trichuris Trichura and Capillaria Philippinensis. So, discovered by Dr. Nilia P. Salazar in 1963. Ayan. So, important information. Common names. Ayan. It is known also as the Pudok Worm and the Mystery Worm. Because it can cause the pudok disease or the mystery disease. Because ano pudok? The pudok is the place in Ilocos Sur kung asa siya ni discover una, all right? And during that time, mga 1960s, there was an outbreak of this unknown disease, no? Um, in that place, in the to sa northern Luzon, and they didn't know kung kinsa ang causative agent. That's why they they uh this, they named it the mystery disease. Ayan. So. And later, it was discovered that it was a parasite, and that is capillaria. Okay. So, common names again. Manasha. Habitat is small intestine. Final host, kind man. Uh, true definitive hosts are the birds. All right? Because again, this nematode uses an intermediate host. So, siya ang first nematode that uses an intermediate host. No? And yung intermediate host kay mga freshwater fish. Or mga brackish, water fish. So, brackish ka mga... I think it's siyang water na magmeet ang river and sea darang dapita no so brackish basta fresh water fish and kanisa na mga fishes ipon birot bagsang bagtu biang bato gapi so please take note kanisa mga fishes iya hang intermediate host because there was a recall in the board exam dili sa among time mga previous gipangutan na gid kunsa na mga fish ang intermediate host ni Capillaria philippinensis so iya hang the A, B, C, D. Which of the following fish uh, can serve as intermediate host for Capillaria? Letter A, ipon, letter B. So, please take note of that. Okay? So, kanina mga fish, they are common in the northern Luzon area, especially sa Ilocos Sur, kung asa siya nakita. And in those areas also, they have dishes, they have food there that uh, ilang ginakaon din na mga fish as raw, no? Mga raw dishes, no? So, di ba, of course, lamin mo dyan ng raw. Ay, ayan, lamin mo dyan ng raw ng mga dish, no? Ayan, so mga kinilaw, ganun, ayan. So, kanina mga fish, actually, they're small na mga fish. Marasyag ka na mga bulinaw na type, yes, yun na So, they have dishes there that they eat these fish raw. Ayan, so, dala na ito siyang makuha, di ba? Because that's the mode of transmission, ingestion of undercooked fish that contains your infective stage, which is filariform larva. Now, diagnostic stage, pwede ang larva makita, but most of the time, ato ma-recover kay the ova of your Capillaria philippinensis, okay? So, uh, pwede po siya other seafood, like shrimps, no, crabs, alright? But most of the time, fish good siya. Because in those areas din, uh, the people defecate or malibang sila sa waters kung asa makita ito mga fish and mga crabs. So, ayan, possible yun na dito po nakuha ang infection and very um, prone to Capillaria. Dito sila nalibang sa waters kung asa na ang mga fish, di ba? Ayan. So, that's for Capillaria philippinensis. Budok worm, Mystery worm, again, infective stage, filariform larva, take note. And the mode of transmission is ingestion of undercooked 
fish or seafood. Ayan. Burying the infective larva. Okay. Now, we go now to the adults. As you can see, the adults are quite similar in appearance with your trichuris. All right? And uh, as we have mentioned, esophagus is known as your stichosome. All right? And the individual cells are known as stichocytes. Okay. All right. Ayan. And the female egg usually have eggs na in utero. So as you can see here, ayan, these are the eggs na naasa iyahang uterus and these are the stichosomes. And magawa siya sa vulva. Alright? Tira na ipagawas ang eggs. Okay. Alright. Now we go now to the eggs of... Uh, Ascari, sorry. Ascari, so... Uh, huh? The eggs of Capillaria, sorry. So the eggs of Capillaria, as you can see, quite similar again in appearance with your uh, checkers. But as you can see, ang shape niya is quite wider. Alright? And it's described as having a guitar, peanut-shaped na... Uh, egg, no? For your trichuris, as you can see, your trichuris talaga is quite slim, no? Mas sexy siya, or uh, mas, uh, mas slim, no? Compared to your capillary, ang capillary is quite wider, okay? So, mas wide iya hang uh, shape, alright? But take, and also, the polar plugs, no? By polar plugs are flattened, they are not that protruded, dula siya ng gawas, or dili siya na naka-prominent, compared to trichuris, okay? Please take note. So, same siya appearance, actually, uh, but again, the eggs, are wider, wider siya, alright? And smaller actually. And the bipolar plugs are flattened, dili siya protruded compared to your trichuris. Okay? Alright, ayan. And also, na siya'y striations ang ubang eggs. Alright. Now, they can be atypical or typical. So, atypical eggs, katong na striation and segmented po siya, embryonated egg, usually this is the one capable of auto-infection, alright? Internal auto-infection pa rin, same with strongy. And the typical egg, kani siya, kaning wider, di ba? Guitar or peanut sheet, all right? Kani siya mo gawa sa environment, sa fresh water, and then mo infect sa mga fish, okay? So the typical egg and the atypical or atypical egg, all right? So as you can see again, wider, quite wider ang eggs ay mohang uh, capillaria and mas pataas siya compared to your trichuris, okay? All right. Now again, for the life cycle, as you can see, from humans, again, if mo defecates sa water, all right? If the feces contains eggs of capillaria, mo embryonate ang egg dito sa imuhang water and becomes L3 larva. And the L3 larva mo hatch and then mo add to sa fish. No? And the fish, again, contains now the L3 larva. Now, if the humans, again, ingest fish that is undercooked or raw, so makuha nila ang larva. Now, in, inside the small intestine, the larva matures into adults. And then the adults, of course, mate to produce the eggs. All right? And then the cycle goes on. No? Um, and some of the larva also and adults can penetrate the intestinal mucosa and cause infection, auto-infection also. All right? Okay, so that's for the life cycle of Capillaria philippinensis. Okay, all right. Now, for the symptoms and pathology, very important because your Capillaria, it causes malabsorption. So, similar with your Georgia Lamblia. Ayan, please take note. Because the adult worms of Capillaria, they burrow, all right? Iyahang buslutan or mu burrow gud siya sa wall, sa ibang intestine, no? sa small intestine especially, sa jejunum. So, what happens is, of course, na mga worms dito na nakatapot, Possible na the nutrients pag absorb dili na siya mahitabo. Alright? So that's why it can cause malabsorption and also steatorrhea. Diba? Steatorrhea, again, ang siya increase sa mga stool, kung steatorrhea, increase ang... <clears throat> fats. Okay, very good. Increased ang uh, fats. Now, wait na. Nata akong whiteboard mark. Anyway, uh, on sama itong increased ang muscle fibers, fibers, fibers sa stool. <laughs> Ano sa ito na term? Creatoria. Okay. Very, very good. Creatoria. Okay. Don't forget. So again, because again, the worms will burrow into the mucosa of the intestine, especially small intestine. There is malabsorption and steatoria. Now, aside from that, there is borborygmi, which is an, a peculiar gurgling sound sa muhang abdomen. Okay. All right. Now, there is intermittent diarrhea, LBM, then constipation na po. And then the small intestine, again, kung asa siya mo inhabit. All right. It's full of worms, no? Both adult and larva. So, again, that could contribute to malabsorption. So, maglisu na absorb ang body sa nutrients kina na nagharang, no? Na na mga worms na nag kinder, alright? Nagharang sa surface of the small intestine. Okay. Now, watery stools are passed up to eight per day. So, na fluid loss. And if magpadayon siya, of course, the patient will be dehydrated, na fluid loss, no? And can lead to muscle wasting, abdominal distension, and edema. Kaya magsigi kang kalibang. Sika fluid loss. Now, if magpadayon, if dili siya maagapan, no, death can occur no, from pneumonia, heart failure, hypokalemia, and cerebral edema. Because again, of 
complications kasi kakalibang of water, no fluid, ayan. So fluid loss, electrolyte imbalance, okay? So it can lead to death, no if hindi siya magapat. That's for capillaria philippinensis. Okay. All right, sige. Now for lab DX, of course, routine ONP examination gapon. Diagnostic stage nato is your egg or larva. And treatment, albendazole, mebendazole. So mga azoles pa rin. Okay? All right, ayan, sige. Now, for this one, this is um, another species of capillaria, and that is capillaria hepatica. So, by the name itself, nasa pangalan na hepatica. So, instead of the intestines, ato siya sa liver. And this is quite common among mga mammals, no, especially sa rats and other rodents. All right? And of course, it causes hepatic capillariasis. All right? Diagnostic stage, of course, because it, it inhabits the liver, liver biopsy. And in the liver biopsy, you can see eggs, all right, and pwedeng adults, pero rarely lang. Infective stage are still embryonated eggs, but the mode of transmission this time is different. Humans acquire the infection accidentally from the soil, no? from ingestion of the eggs from the soil. All right? So, accidental ra ang humans. All right. Now, the egg, quite similar with your um, capillary philippinensis na appearance, ang yang egg. Adult is also slender, rarely seen intact, and inside the liver, the lar larva or the adult dies. Okay? All right. Now, for pathogenesis, by the name itself, of course, it infects the liver. Hepatica, no? It, to, it prefers to infect the liver, all right? The larva can migrate to lungs and kidneys and also other organs, no? And as I've mentioned, humans are only accidental hosts. So again, can kind of possible from the soil, all right? Now, symptoms can mimic those of hepatitis, amoebic liver abscess, trichinosis, VLM, Lower floor syndrome, Hodgkin's disease, and histoplasmosis. So VLM again, the same meaning of VLM, visceral larva migrate. So nasa pangalan na, the larva will migrate into different organs inside, visceral. Okay, all right. Now diagnosis is of course, as you can see, kung human, kung true human infection kinsya, meaning na kwa siya sa soil sa imuhang patient, then dili makita ng egg sa stool. Because again, di ba, asa man makita ng egg sa liver. So, in the liver, sa liver paren parenchyma, sa tissue good sa liver makita ang mga eggs. So, dili siya ma-express sa imuhang stool. That's why in stool exams, dili na mo makita ang egg sa capillary hepatica. But there are cases of spurious infection. So, again, sa meaning sa spurious, igura siyang ni agi, pero wag siya ni cause og infection. So, in cases of spurious infection, pwedeng makita imuhang uh, eggs of capillaria hepatica uh, sa stool after ingesting infected liver. Ayan. So, after eating um, infected liver. Example, uh, pork liver. Ayan. Na, that contains the eggs of capillaria hepatica. So, spurious na siya. No? Um, it, it's not really a true infection of humans. Alright? Nakuha na niya, pagkaon niya o infected meat, especially pork liver, that contains the eggs of capillaria hepatica. Okay? So, na mga inana, spurious infections. Alright? But if through human infection yun siya, meaning, ang humans naka, nakuha yun niya sa soil, di ba? Kaya accidental ingestion mani, then, the eggs will not be seen in the stool, but it will be seen in the liver. Because again, capillary hepatica, nasa pangalan na, it prefers to infect your livers. Okay. Alright. So, that's for capillary hepatica. So, here are examples, no? So, these are the eggs found in liver tissue. So as you can see, same siya appearance na nagyapon with your um, capillary philippinensis. But ang C. philippinensis yun, makita ng egg sa stool. Alright? Ayan. Now, C. hepatica egg, as you can see, same nagyapon siya with your capillary philippinensis. Uh, but the polar plugs are still not protruded. Wala siya ng gawas, no? And it's not that prominent. Okay. So this is seen in the sample. Uh, stool sample of a cat. Ayan. So capillary hepatica. So nasa pangalan na, liver. Prefers to infect the liver. Okay. Alright. Yeah, and so before we proceed to the next group of parasites, the uncommon intestinal nematodes, uh, do you have any questions, dears? Sa to mga common intestinal nematodes. <laughs> Again, sa tong infective stage, ato ang uh, capillaria philippinensis. Nato ba kung? Infective stage? Ah, uh, yes. Sa imong capillaria philippinensis, your. Filariform larvae. Okay, very good. Filariform larva. Okay, and again, mode of transmission nato for capillaria philippinensis. Your ingestion of infected fish. Okay, all right, very good. Take note, have 
um, undercooked or raw. Okay, if naluto nagtarong imo ang fish, then possible na din na siya maka-infect. Pero if raw siya undercooked, yes, then pwede siya maka-cause of infection. Okay, alright. So, those are all your common intestinal nematodes from ascaris up to capillaria. Alright? Now, we go now to the uncommon. Of course, by the name itself, these are still uh, nematodes that can infect humans, especially sa intestine, uh, sa digestive tract na part. But again, they're rarely recovered. No, it's not common. Okay, and we'll start first with your uh, trichostrongylus. Now, your trichostrongylus actually same, same sila og uh, characteristics with your hookworm and strongy. Okay, now the difference now for uh, trichostrongylus, the eggs are similar to your hookworm, but as you can see, the eggs are quite pointed. Ayan, sige, ito lang present para makita ang picture. Ayan. So as you can see, medyo eggs are uh, dili siya smooth na oval, di pareha si mong hookworm. There is a tapering, no, or na siya pointed end, alright? And uh, this is a parasite common among herbivores. So sa mga horse, sa mga cattle, sa mga cows, ganun. Because again, they are acquired accidentally, Japan, by ingestion of, uh, ingestion of leafy vegetables that contain your filariform larvae. And of course, your herbivores, they like leafy vegetables. So, common nila, no? So, within the vegetables, it contains the filariform larva. So, same sila og, ang trichostrongylus, same ra og infective stage with your hookworm and strongy, but the difference is the mode of transmission. Trichostrongylus is uh, acquired by ingestion, okay, of the filariform larva, usually found in leafy vegetables. Hookworm and strongy is, again, skin penetration, all right? Ayan. And of course, ang eggs, eggs of trichostrongylus, pointed iyahang eggs, okay? Now, aside from that, symptoms, if daghan mang gani, similar gapon with hookworm na mga symptoms. But if dili kayo daghan ang worms, then possible that the symptoms are not significant. Okay. Now, rabditiform larva, take note, the tip of the tail na siya bead-like swelling. So, na ay murag hubag na similar to a bead, ang appearance. And among the three, siya ang pinaka-jewots. Ayan, siya ang pinaka-smallest ang genet genital primordium. So, si strongy ang pinaka-dax. Si hookworm ang sac, meaning saktora siya. Okay, saktora yung size. Ayan. And <coughs> trichostrongylus ang pinaka-jutes. Siya ang pinaka-gamay. Okay? Alright. It has the smallest genital primordium. For filariform larva, the tail is uh, knob-like. So, mara siya door na bang appearance. And aside from that, it contains an intestinal lumen that is zigzag in appearance. So, zigzag. Okay? Alright. And adults, in comparison to hookworm, they don't have distinct buccal capsule, meaning wala siya teeth or wala siya cutting plates, unlike your hookworm. Kinsa kayo na ay cutting plates sa mga hookworm na species na to? Wala. <laughs> cutting plates? Iyahang na sa mouth? Cutting plates. Nako, press the buzzer. Yes. Kinsa man. See? Yes? Nako, yes. <laughs> cutting plates? For a hookworm among the species that infect man, is that all? See? An Americano, sir. Okay, very good. Necator Americano. So take note, how do we remember? Necator, nasa pangalan na? Necat, no? Necat. So nasa cutting plates, okay? Necat, cutting plates, okay? Don't forget. And of course, ang teeth si Ancelostoma. Ancelostoma, the ordinale, and Ancelostoma species. Teeth ilaha, so teeth yun. All right? Then, um, kinsa tong tuha, duha, ka Ancelostoma species that exhibit creeping eruptions or cutaneous larva migrants. Nako, press the buzzer ulit. Cutaneous larva migrants or creeping eruptions. Crew, crew, yes. <laughs> All right. Creeping eruptions or cutaneous larva migrants. See? Going once, going twice. All right. Your, <laughs> your animal hookworm, the Ancelostoma brasiliense, which is your cat hookworm, and Ancelostoma caninum, which is your dog hookworm. Okay, don't forget, sila na mo exhibit of cutaneous larva migrants or creeping eruptions, no? The larva moves uh, within the subcutaneous tissues and makita ng mga tracks, na yung mga snake-like tracks, serpiginous tracks, imuhang skin, alright? Which is the migrating larva, okay? Katunggal di hook na larva, alright? And that is, again, cutaneous larva migrants caused by the animal hookworm, Ancelostoma brasiliense and Ancelostoma 
Canaido. Okay. All right. So don't forget about that. All right. So that's for uh, trichostrongulus. Again, mode of transmission, ingestion of uh, filariform larva. In contrast to your hookworm and your strongy na skin penetration. Okay. All right. Ayan. So that's for trichostrongulus. Next, we have um, esophagostomum. No, esophagostomum species. Worms, as you can see, ang eggs gap one, still resemble your hookworm. Um, and very important lang to take note is that it causes what we call your dapaong tumor. No? So dapaong tumor, dapaong is a place no? kung asa siya common. So kanisha na infection usually common in uh, northern uh, Togo, ayan, northern uh, Togo and sa Ghana. All right? Ghana and both of these places are found in Africa. So, northern Togo and Ghana. All right? So, kanisha na infection ng esophagostomum. It's common in the northern uh, Togo and Ghana na areas sa Africa. All right? And dapaong tumor, it's uh, loosely translated as a turtle in the belly. So, this worm, it causes a mass, no? Mass. M-A-S-S. -S, mass in your abdomen, uh, especially in the colon. So, matapot ang mass sa colon. And it resembles, or it will form a shape similar to a turtle. That's why murag na kay turtle in the belly. Okay? Ayan. So that's for esophagostomo. And aside from that, take note, yahang adults, uh, there is a tapering tail sheath and the intestinal cells are triangular in shape. Alright? Okay. Now again, uh, this worm, alright, esophagostomo, diba? it causes a mass no, in your abdomen that resembles a turtle. That's why murag na kay turtle in the belly. Alright? Now aside from that, inside also, the worms can cause mga nodules. They can form nodules, all right? And inside the nodules are worms, actually, okay? Now, um, this nodules or this mass is actually not that harmful, all right? In itself, dili siya makakosog harm. But it can complicate, no? It can complicate uh, further or it can cause complications in the intestine. Pwede magka hernia, pwede magka abdominal wall perforation, inana. So, uh, in the mass itself is not, like, it's not cancerous or it's not that... Um, Harmful, pero it can complicate, no? It can cause complications, all right, in the intestine, all right. So yeah, nmer sa nakay mas sa imong abdomen. Again, resembling a turtle, that's why it's described as turtle in the belly. Okay, all right, and so that's for esophagus to move. Okay, now uh, for the life cycle, as you can see, it's filariform larva that you ingest. Okay, accidentally gap on ingestion, no? And it's believed that it's fecal oral. Okay. Fecal oral ang yahang mode of transmission. Okay? And again, common siya in Africa, northern Togo, and sa Ghana. Okay? Alright. Sige. That's for esophagostomo. Alright. Next, you have your eustrongylides. No, eustrongylides is, um, again, common siya in the fish. Alright? Uh, sa fish siya makita, and it's a parasite of wading birds. No? So, kana mga, uh, I think, mga cranes, kana wading birds, na kanang maglakaw ra sa, sa lake, or like sa river, or sa water, and then mag Kaon of fish, inana. wading birds, no? Um, and then, they are a parasite of fish, again. Freshwater fish or mga minnows, bait minnows, kaning gamay, alright? And humans acquire it accidentally from ingestion of sashimi and sushi. So, ano mga raw na mga fish. Ayan, so masasarap pa naman ito. So, be careful lang, ganun, okay? So, again, ingestion of sashimi or sushi accidentally, alright? But again, they are normal parasites of birds and again, found in the fish. Ayan, so this is an example of Use strongly these species found in a fish. So bait minnows, kato mga gagmay na fish. All right, so that's use strongly these species. Next, you have Gongylonema species. Now, Gongylonema species very important. It uses an intermediate host, and ang intermediate host kay mga cockroaches and other insects. Now, humans kita accidentally makuha from either ingestion of these insects or pwede pong contaminated water. So ew. So example lang mga ginagmay na cockroach or beetles or like other insects. And then, nasa sa itong food, makita, makaw na itong apil. Ayan. All right, okay. Now, very important species of Gongilunima is Gongilunima pulchrum. No? Gongilunima pulchrum is also known as your gullet worm or stitch worm. Ayan. Anterior end is thin and thread-like, and the posterior end is wider or tapered. And a very important characteristic then sa yang anterior end is what we call this cuticular bosses. All right? Or also known as scutes or flakes. These cuticular bosses, meron siya mga protrusions, alright, sa iyahang skin, sa gawas, but their function is still unknown, alright, but mga, ano na siya, distinct uh, protrusions, meron siya mga dermal protrusions sa iyahang skin, sa gawas, okay. So that's your cuticular bosses. And again, iyahang posterior end sa likod is wider and tapered, okay, wider and 
tapered. Ayan, sige. Now, this is the egg of G. pulchrum. Again, quite similar in appearance, Japan, with your hookworm. Now, for humans, usually, if infected show with Gongulunima pulchrum, the main complaint, all right, the chief complaint of humans infected with Gongulunima pulchrum is there is something moving, all right? There is a moving organism, moving organism in the mouth. Ayan. So, maka-feel sila, no? Na na something galihok sa ilang oral cavity. All right? And most of the time, pwede nilang makuha na sila ibot na worm from their mouth. Ayan. And that is gongilunima, polchrome, most of the time. Okay? So, again, that's the chief complaint. There is something moving. There is a moving organism in their mouth or in their oral cavity. So, my gosh, nako, yung mga ano dyan, may mga nag-move sa mouth, baka hindi na yan worm, charot. <laughs> baka iba, eme. Joke lang. Alright, ayan. So, ano siya mabot sa mouth? So, we'll go now to the life cycle. Now, so, again, we get it from accidental ingestion of these insects that contain the larva. Now, once inside the intestine na to, alright, incidental human infection, of course, madigest ang bug, mugawas ang imuhang larva. Now, the larva will migrate from the stomach and your small intestine padulong sa upper GI tract, sa esophagus, and sa oral cavity. So, dito sila mo mature. Okay? So, from the uh, intestine and stomach, no, mo migrate siya, padulong sa imuhang throat, sa imuhang oral cavity. Alright? And dito siya mo mature. That's why pwede siya ma-recover sa imuhang oral cavity. Okay? So, um, of course, worms usually itong makuha. Alright? The eggs are seldom passed in the stool. Alright? And um, usually makita ng mga eggs sa mga kaning uban na mga definitive host like your pork, pigs, and your sheep. No, But for humans, usually, ang adults ato makuha from the mouth. And again, most of the complaints of patients infected of uh, infected with your gonglinima pulchrum, there is something moving na in your mouth. Nako, sinasabi ko talaga. So be careful, tears. <laughs> so, na yun question ako, na yun ask ako from another section. Like, pwede ba siya transmit through kissing? So I'm not sure. <laughs> Parang hindi naman yata. Because again, these worms are, uh, they are trapped, good, or they are within the tissues of your mouth. Pwede sa gums, no? pwede sa yung cheeks. So if your kissing is not that intense din naman, wala pa akanay, hindi po magsamad, so la most likely, hindi na po siya matransmit. Okay? <laughs> Pero if ka ng paakanay, eh, eh, so baka pwede. <laughs> Alright. So again, uh, more transmission din naman natin is ingestion of the larva. Alright? And most of the time, adults na yung makita there is a mohang oral cavity. Okay? Alright, ayan. So that's for gongilunima fulcrum. That's why it's called gullet worm. Diba? Gullet means esophagus. Because again, dira siya sa esophagus or sa oral cavity mo mature. Sa upper GI tract. Okay? So that's for gongilunima fulcrum. Alright, ayan. So that's for gongilunima fulcrum. Okay. And the last among the uncommon intestinal nematodes are your acanthocephala. Actually, your acanthocephala is another phylum, no? Lahig yun siya na phylum, pero ako siyang di-appeal din. So, acanthocephala is also known as your thorny-headed worms or spiny, no? Spiny-headed worms or thorny-headed worms because their proboscis or their mouth part contains spines, no? Nasa yung mga projections na spines sa kilid. Ayan. So, or mga thorns. So, that's why acantho, di ba? Acanthocytes na yung mga thorn-like projections. Okay. Now, thorny-headed worms or spiny-headed worms ang mga, mga species na to. You have monoliformis, monoliformis, Macrocantorhynchus hyrodinaceus, Macrocantorhynchus ingens, and Bolbosoma. So, kanisa na mga acanthocephala na mga worms ang maka-infect sa humans. There are, other, there are still a lot of other acanthocephala na mga worms, pero kanila sila ang maka-infect. Okay. Now, similar with your gongilunima, they use arthropods as intermediate host. Again, cockroaches or pwedeng mga beetles pa rin. Now, for humans, uh, accidentally acquired ingestion of sashimi. <laughs> so, kanang mga fish pa rin, no? So, possible na nilatay ang cockroach nila or what? Or na cockroach na na-appeal pagkaon nato. So, ugh, ugh, like, ew. Alright. And that's why it's called, again, as mentioned, acanthocephala or thorny-headed worms because it's proboscis or yahang mouth part. Alright? Ayan. Yahang proboscis is armed. When you say armed, it contains mga spines. Alright? Or mga thorns. Alright. Ayan. Sige. Now, very few cases have been reported but those that exhibit symptoms intense ilahang symptoms. Uh, especially mga abdominal symptoms because the proboscis na naay mga thorns, the worms will inject, no, yung i-penetrate, no, pa, i-penetrate ang lumen, ang, ang imuhang intestinal wall. So, musulud yun siya dito, di ba? And that can cause irritation and damage to the intestine. So, that's why it can cause um, intense na mga symptoms. Alright? So, that's for your acanthocephala. So, these are the eggs, M. hyrodinaceus and M. monoliformis. Um, this is M. hyrodinaceus eh, na adult. So, this one here, ako na lang i-present. Ito na maklaro. Ayan. 
This one here, kaning gamay na murag protrude. This is the uh, head of M. Hyronesius. And as you can see, nasa yung mga, mga spikes. No? That's the uh, spikes or spines, di ba? That's why it's called thorny-headed worms. And this is M. moniliformis na adult. So as you can see, kabantay mo na mura siya na siya segments, no? So that's why iyahang appearance is described as pseudo-segmented because it's not true na siya mga segments. Unlike the true na mga tapeworm. Your tapeworm, ilahang segments mga good kay very kanang distinct, like nasa different segments. Now for your... Um, for your, for M moniliformis, it's pseudo-segmented. So this is the true tapeworm. Ayan. As you can see, na yung mga separate na segments. Claro jug kaayo, no? Na na mga separate segments. And this is pseudo-segmented. As you can see, na murag, na aray murag segments na appearance. Pero di siya separate na mga segments. Unlike your tapeworm. Alright? So pseudo-segmented ang M moniliformis. That's based on picture. Pero di siya tapeworm. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Sige. So that's for the acanthocephala. Okay. Now for, uh, ayan, these are some pictures. Ayan. So this is the parts good of your um, acanthocephala. Again, this is a proboscis that is armed. Again, it contains spines or mga thorns. That's why acantho. All right. Now, M. moniliformis proboscis is uh, in closer or higher magnification. So nandiyan po yung mga spikes sa kilid. And this is a an intestinal biopsy. Biopsy of a tissue from a pig intestine uh, that Contains, no? The one, kanisha, munisha ang acanthocephala worm nagi insert iyahang self uh, using the proboscis into the lumen of the intestine. Diba? So, sakit, no? It causes pain. Kay, of course, musulun siya sa mga intestine and can cause damage. Alright? So, muna na possible na mga severe symptoms for those that are asymptomatic. That, for those that are symptomatic with acanthocephala na infections. Okay? Alright. Now, for the life cycle, ayan, as you can see. Take note, ha? take note of the larval stages. It starts with acanthor, followed by acanthella, and then finally the cystacanth, diba? So cystacanth ang pinaka-mature na larva. So chala siya names, no? So acanthor, acanthella, and then cystacanth, okay? Now again, definitive hosts usually are mga pigs, alright? Raccoons and your rats, no? So moniliformis, moniliformis for rats, macrocanthorincos ingens for your raccoons, and macrocanthorincos hyrodinesios sa imuhang pigs, alright? Now, in the pigs and the rest of your mammals, mo produce silang eggs, alright? But in humans, usually, ang imuhang worms, they don't usually reach uh, maturity, alright? And they put silang makaproduce ng eggs, alright? Ayan, so that's for um, the adults, alright? Uh, in your uh, small intestine found in human infection. But again, in the rest of your mammals, pigs, raccoons, and rats, mo produce silang eggs. Dito give sila makomplete ang life cycle, alright? Take note of your larval stages, acanthor, acanthella, and cystacanth. Diba? Very nice. Okay. Ayan. So that's for uh, the acanthocephala. All right. Sige. So before I proceed to the last group na of your uh, parasites for today, do you have any questions? All right. Napa ba ko? Okay pa ba? All right. Napa. Okay. <laughs> any questions? Hands Again, so, oh, nan, okay. Sige, sorry. Ano sa so, itong mode of transmission natin for trichostrongulus gani? Trichostrongulus. Ano sa so, itong mode of transmission? Yes? Ingestion Your? of leafy vegetables, sir. Alright. Ingestion of leafy vegetables that contain the filariform larva. Alright. So, different lang siya with your hookworm kay skin penetration ang hookworm. But for trichostrongulus, it's ingestion. Okay. All right. So take note of those mga uncommon intestinal nematodes. All right. Uh, they, again, they can still infect humans, pero di lang yun siya common ka ay. All right. And again, kinsa to ato ang ano, makakos o turtle in the belly, dapaong tumor. Kinsa kanina? Si? Si? Yes, ah, so. Okay, esophagostomum. Very good. All right, ayan. Take note of that. Sige. All right, so those are all the intestinal nematodes. All right, so these are nematodes that primarily infect, primarily cause infections in the intestine, no, in the digestive tract. Now, we go now to the tissue nematodes. Now, these nematodes actually napo sila intestinal counterpart, no? Like, magsugun sila from the intestine, all right, but... Uh, the areas in the body kung asa sila ganahan are usually the other tissues uh, like sa muscles ba or uh, subcutaneous tissues, not the intestine. But dito sila magikan, alright? So, gikan sa intestine, pwede sila mo spread to the other tissues like muscles ba or 
um, your subcutaneous tissues. And we'll start first with, of course, the very popular, <laughs> the trichinella spiralis. Now, trichinella spiralis, um, it causes the greatest increase in your eosinophilia. Please take note, it's the most intense of eosinophilia. Okay, but again, the question is, uh, increase in eosinophils causes the greatest increase in eosinophils na ko wag na mag isep <laughs> press the buzzer na your trichinella spiralis all right now take note that all stages of the development happen within one host unlike your nematodes other nematodes ascaris no uh, trichuris or capillaria na mo require pag other host or mo require pag soil diba for maturation for trichinella it only happens in one host all right okay now, common names are muscle worm because ganon siya sa mga muscles later when we describe when we discuss the life cycle. Trichina, trichina worm and garbage worm. So garbage worm, ayan ganon siyang com ganon siyang called na garbage worm kaysa mga garbages like um, especially if nakay mga food waste from uh, that contains mga meat na undercooked, alright, and makaon sa mga rats, ayan mga rats no rodents na mo kaon sa garbage, ayan. Pwede sila makakuwag trichinella spiralis dito. That's why trichinella spiralis is known as garbage worm. Okay. Now, habitat, take note. We have emphasized this already. Kung adult ang ipangunta na, small intestine, iyahang habitat. But kung larva, it is found in the muscles. No? Especially mga striated muscles, your skeletal muscles. Okay? Please take note. So, if ang question again, adult, uh, trichinella spiralis can be found in, of course, your small intestine. Basta adult. But kung larva, it is found in cysted, no? They are in a cyst-like formation sa imuhang mga muscles, alright? Especially striated muscles, alright? Now, final host, the true final host good are pigs, no? Pigs and other mammals that are omnivores or carnivores, okay? Now, accidental or dead-end host kay kita. Accidental host at aman, alright? And dead-end because um, ang larva within the muscles na to, once they are in cysted, they do not develop further into adults okay all right now diagnostic stage is the insisted larva found in muscles or muscle biopsy infective stage is the insisted larva now mode of transmission good is ingestion pa din of undercooked or raw meat no and the meat could be pork but it put bear no pwede walrus but it put horse no pwede horse uh, that contains the insisted larva but the most common source good is pork okay ingestion of undercooked or raw na pork so take note ha if later on, if ma med tech na good mo, finally ma RMTs and or ma proceed mo med, and then magsigi na mo balik balik kung chicken alas peralis, <laughs> naji ma abut, ma abut mo sa point na maka correlate mo dayon ba? Na ah, chicken ala, okay, muscle na siya. Alright? But please take note again, hi, if ang question kay adults, habitat, kung adults, small intestine. But kung muscle, please take note, muscle, makitan ang larva. Alright? Sa larva, ang larva makitan sa muscles. Alright? Motor transmission, ingestion, ingestion of undercooked, or raw meat no especially from pork okay sige now we go now to adults now adults as you can see males are still smaller and same with enterobius after copulation the male dies and females as you can see club shaped uterus and inside the uterus are already larva so walay egg stage diba walay egg stage and um the lar the ma produce niya dayon kay mga larva diba that's why chicanella is known as larviparous or viviparous kaya ha mga anak diretsong larva walay eggs na okay so that's for trichinella spiralis na adults. Now we go now to the larva. Again, as we have mentioned, the larva of your trichinella spiralis, they insist within your striated, striated muscles, especially skeletal muscles. And usually, dito sila sa mga active muscles mo adto. So asa na mga active muscles? Sa jaw, no? Sa imuhang mga extremities, sa arms, sa legs, alright? Because usually in these active muscles, uh, the blood supply is in greatest amount, no? So daghan kayong blood supply. So... Very ano, conducive for growth, kidaghang blood supply, daghang nutrients. No? And aside from that, within the muscles, there is what we call a nurse cell. This nurse cell is what, in a way, helps the incisted larva to develop. No? So for nourishment. Okay. All right. For nourishment. Ayan. So um, the nurse cell no? found in the muscles. Okay. All right. Ayan. So Average lifespan also because again, um, in your in, when once the insisted larva um, is found in the muscles, no, uh, again it will not develop further into adult. It will remain larva forever and padayno siyang nourish. So possible yun na mataas yung lifespan. Pwede five to ten years, alright, or pwede mabot to forty years. Again, so and after a while, if dili gud siya mo infect or dili siya ma hatag to another host, the larva will die, alright. Mamatay ra siya and then mo calcify, mo gahi, no ay muhang insisted larva, okay, in your muscles. Alright? So that's for the larva. Again, 
Larvae or larva can be found in cysted, all right? They are in a cyst-like formation, no? Inside your muscles, all right? Okay, ayan, sige. Now, we go on to the life cycle, ayan. Now, again, we have mentioned that the mode of transmission is ingestion of undercooked meat that contains the larva. So, pagkaon na to sa pork, especially pork that contains the larva, no? Undercooked. So, madigest ang meat. Mugawas ang larva, okay? Mugawas ang larva sa mga small intestine. Now, the larva and the small intestine will mature into adults, okay? Now, the adults, this time, sila na yung produce ang mga new larva, okay? Now, after mating, they produce the new larva, all right? The new larva in your small intestine, of course, will then be carried by your circulation and lymphatics padulong nasa striated muscle, all right? Now, again, striated muscle ilang ganahan, but the larva can also reach the brain and also the heart, all right? But in the brain and the heart, they will not insist, okay? Dili lang produce og cyst-like formation, unlike sa muhang striated muscle. So once mabot siya sa brain and meninges and sa heart, pwede na siyang makakos og infection dito, pero dili siya mo insist. Dili siya pa sa muhang muscles, skeletal muscles na naagod sila dito magpuyo, alright? So in a way, ang insisted larva, kaya mo siya dormant stage nila, alright? Na pwede siyang mupadayon until tila ka years, okay? Alright, so sa brain, meninges, and sa heart, again, di lang mo insist dito. Okay, ayan. So as you can see, um, di ba, it only happens in one host. Parehas, ani, di ba, sige nagbalik-balik. Kung ang pig mukha o nung rat, or ang pig mukha o nung mga pork scrap, sa mga if mag, mag take care mong pigs, nga inyong ipakaon kay mga food waste ninyo, na baboy po, so cannibalism, mabalik-balik ka nila. Same as po sa mga bears, sa mga walrus, di ba, na mukha o po nung same mga rats, so magbalik-balik ka gud niya. So the host, uh, it's only one, no? It only happens in one host, no? So, uh, di gud siya kailangan na ma-expose pa sa environment para mo mature and all that, di ba? Unlike your other nematodes, okay? Alright, now in the US, because again, nasa lay mga kanang, mga hunters, no? Sige, mag-hunt. So, you have wall, mag-hunt sa bear or mga walrus ba, no? Sa mga northern areas. And then usually, ilang kanon as raw. Kaya murag ilahang prize, di ba, of hunting. Ilang kanon as raw. So, dito nila pwede makuha. Okay? Alright. But kita, wala man tayo kaayoy hunting, uh, wala tayong mga bears, kaayo, ah, wala tayong mga walrus in a way po. So, usually, atong source of infection kay pork, no? Undercooked pig or uh, undercooked pork. Yeah, undercooked pork. Alright, okay. So, that's for uh, Chikinella spiralis life cycle. Okay, alright. Now, we go now to your um, disease, no? So, starting first with ayan, ayan. So again, the disease is known as trichinosis, trichiniasis, or trichinellosis. So it is described as the great imitator because again, it can mimic other diseases. No? So you have mga symptoms, as you can see naman, after eating undercooked pork that contains the larva, the symptoms that will appear are non-specific, non no? so mga intestinal symptoms. Those symptoms that can point to food poisoning, di ba? So, uh, so of course, pag present mo sa, in, sa hospital, pag ato mo dito, pwede ka madiagnose ng as food poisoning. Now, let's say, wala ito siya natambalan, wala na mention, or wala kita na chickenella. So, possible that the larva will still continue to migrate to the muscle. So, in the muscle invasion, ang ma-feel na sa patient kay fever, periorbital edema, so manghubag iyahang mata, alright? Muscle pain, sakit yung muscle pain, uh, sakit yung muscle pain, sakit yung muscles, <laughs> swelling, and of course, uh, weakness. Okay. Now, muscle damage, of course, may cause uh, problems in chewing, swallowing, and breathing. Because again, di ba, remember that the um, larva likes to reside in active muscle. So, sa jaw, di ba, sa throat, alright? So, if dito sila magpuyo, possible na maghubag yung muhang muscles, so mag, magliso na kag-chew, no? magliso na kag-swallow, and even breathe. Ayan. So, sa una lang, kung liso na mag-swallow, charon. Ayan, di na makaswallow, eme. <laughs> so, most severe symptom, as I mentioned, because pwede silang maabot sa heart, is myocarditis. Okay? And aside from that, as mentioned, it causes the greatest increase in your eosinophils. Peripheral eosinophilia, it can reach up to 90%. Because again, it involves tissues na, no? Uh, so, possible good na intense ang eosinophils na ma-produce, okay? Kay, sa tissues na iyahang infection, okay? And again, it can involve your CNS. It can cause uh, trichinella encephalitis, all right? But again, that's not common. Pero if it happens, it is life-threatening, no? It's deadly, okay? All right, that's for trichinella Spiralis. Okay, so muscle invasion yun ang pinaka-common. Alright? Ayan. So, very orbital edema, manghubagay mo hang mata, muscle pain, and swelling. Alright, ayan. See, so, that's for uh, symptoms and uh, pathology. Now, we go na to lab DX. Of course, the main method yun na is muscle biopsy. 
Because again, we can see the insisted larva there. But this sample or this um, test only becomes positive two to three weeks after the onset of illness. So medyo matagal pa. So if we want to wrap to detect rapidly, then we go to immunotest, no? So you have the enzyme immunoassays as a confirmato uh, screening, sorry, screening tests. And then those positive in EIA, ato siya confirm with bentonite. Bentonite flocculation test. And bentonite flocculation tests are also used for echinococcus granulosus. Take note. So bentonite flocculations, uh, flocculation tests are for confirmation, confirmatory. Enzyme immunoassays are for screening. All right? Now, Bachmann intradermal is known as the skin test. Ayan, skin test for chickenella spiralis. So marami na tayong skin tests na na-mention, di ba? Skin test, nigawas yapon sa ilahang quiz bowl gahapon. It's a type of hypersensitivity. Basta mga skin test gani, that's a type 4, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. It's uh, T cell mediated. All right? Okay, take note of that. Basta mga skin test, skin test. Okay, contact dermatitis. Yes, tuberculin skin test. Um, pneumonitis na hypersensitivity. Yes, these are all type 4 hypersensitivity reactions. Uh, T cell mediated. Take note. All right. Lumabas sa ilahang quiz bowl gahapon. Yes. All right. So, Bachmann intradermal test is the skin test for your chukinala. So, nanay tulo na na mention. Again, ang first kay sa Leishmania. Ayan. Kakin sa ganito, sa ilahang skin test sa Leishmania. If na remember pa ba? <laughs> your. <laughs> Malimta na. Napa ba ko? Or baka na-disconnect na ako siya. Okay, napa. Alright. <laughs> Nasa ito ang skin test sa Leishmania? Montenegro. Alright. Very good. Your Montenegro, Montenegro skin test or Leishmanian skin test. Alright. Next, for Ascaris, another skin test for Ascaris na na-mention, your? Nasa man to? Letter M ulit. Magaling kayo dyan. <laughs> your, <laughs> your, the, the moan test. M-O-A-N dyan. <laughs> moan test. Ayan, moan test. And then lastly, for chicken ala, Bachman intradermal test. Okay, take note of that. So, kanin mga skin test. Again, mga skin test, towards the end, medyo gamay na lang itong mga wala pa skin tests na mention. Ito nang is-summarize ang mga skin test in parasitology. Sa Bacte, dapat mga other skin test dito, pero sa Bacte to siya. Okay? For para, muni siya, ha? So far, Montenegro, your Leishmanin, for Leishmania. You have a Moan test for Ascaris. And then lastly, kaling Bachman intraderma so far. Okay? For your Chikinella spiralis. And aside from that, you have the Bex Sino diagnosis. Ayan. So letter B. Maraming letter B, di ba? So Bex, Bentonite, Bachman. So basta mga letter Bs, that's for Chikinella spiralis. Okay. Now, Bex Sino diagnosis. Sino diagnosis, diba, is the process, uh, the test procedure in which you use animals as your test samples, diba? And the animals usually ato siyang expose o patient suspected of having the parasite. Like, imo siya feed sa patient or whatever. And then, what happens, imo examine ang animal if it contains the parasite. And if the animal contains the parasite, then the patient is positive for that particular parasite. And diba, sino diagnosis, kakinsa natin siya na first nag discuss Takinsa na hemoflagellate, ayan. Hemoflagellate ni siya, sino diagnosis? Takinsa man eh. See? You used reduviid bug. Nako, ayan na. Grab, perfect na yun. <laughs> mga clues. Takinsa man eh. Sino diagnosis? For? For? Atong first. Katong first na itong na-introduce ni siya. Atong niya siya na first introduce with takinsa na hemoflagellate. And it uses reduviid bugs, iyahang vector. Trypanosoma cruzi, sir. Okay, very good. Trypanosoma cruzi. Alright, trypanosoma cruzi, trypanosoma cruzi. Very good. Okay, so kanis sila mga sinodiagnosis ha? Trypanosoma cruzi and si trichinella spiralis. So silang duha ang mga gamit o sinodiagnosis. Alright? Okay, now treatment uh, is of course removal of the muscle with the insisted larva. And aside from that, mga azos, mebendazole and of course, albendazole. Aside from that, of course, presumptive diagnosis can be made from food history. No, If the patient presents to the hospital with intestinal symptoms, of course, the doctor will ask for its history for the past hour or for the past days. Ayan. And if we mention among undercooked meat, undercooked pork, then uh, the doctor can have an idea na possible chukinella, okay, or other diseases. Aside from that, there could also be a sub ungual or sub conjunctival hemorrhages. Ayan, so ato na siyang e, right? Sub ungual or sub conjunctival. 
So sub ungual when you say sub ungual it's below the uh, yeah below the nails no all right and sub conjunctiva there is a muhang eyes no so sa imuhang um imuhang nails and sa eyes na ay what we call splinter hemorrhage ayan splinter hemorrhages all right so na mga lines no na mga lines of hemorrhages so sa nails especially sa nails na may mga lines ay nana so mga shag lines <laughs> <laughs> Luma, mga lines, no? Black lines sa muhang nails. Those are splinter hemorrhages that could, again, uh, help in the presumptive, presumptive diagnosis. Okay, all right. So that's for uh, Trichinella spiralis uh, na disease. Okay, all right. Ayan, sige. Now, we go on to additional notes, of course, as mentioned, because your Trichinella spiralis happens only in one host. The man will serve as both the definitive and intermediate host. Now, freezing can destroy the larva of T. spiralis, and it's best to uh, store your meat uh, at, at below zero temperatures, no negative 15 degrees Celsius, because it will decrease the viability of the organism. And aside from that, recommended cooking temperature nato sa to mga meat is 77 degrees uh, Celsius, minimum of 77 degrees Celsius or about 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's why. I'm not a fan usually of mukhaon ng mga, mga rare steak ka na mga ina gani. Okay, very scary. <laughs> Aside from nematodes, of course, na pa'y, you know, tainya, na tapeworm, di ba? And other diseases pa. So, ayaw. So, <laughs> very, ano lang, no? But there are dishes na lamig yun na raw. Lamig yun na raw, charot. So, we have to be careful lang, no? You, as medtechs already know, kung say possible, na mga diseases na pwede makuhaan siya. Okay? Alright. Sige. Now, this table here is the algorithm for the diagnosis of trichinellosis. So the symptoms are grouped into a are grouped into A, B, C, D. So what the doctor does is, pwede niyang i-observe ang symptoms, no? Kung unsan siya na group na belong, no? And if the patient exhibits symptoms from group A and group B, then that is diagno diagnostic of trichinella. Or if group B and group C, na na. So nasa lang own parameters nila, okay, on how to diagnose, all right? And this is the group na ilang gina-follow, all right? And the symptoms found in each group na ilang gina-follow. All right? Okay, that's for Chikinella uh, spiralis. Okay, all right, sige. So before we proceed to the last two remaining na lang na nematodes for today, all right? Any questions? Any clarifications? All right? Okay. All right, sige. So we now proceed to the last two, no? Your androstrongulus. So doha ka species of androstrongulus. The first one is androstrongulus. Uh, cantonensis. Actually, yung yeah, new name karon kay parastrongulus, pero nadya po uh, references na nagamit og angiostrongulus. So, ato siyang i-padayon o gamit. Now, this angiostrongulus cantonensis or parastrongulus cantonensis, it causes <coughs> excuse me, cerebral angiostrongulysis. Alright. <coughs> excuse me. Allergy. Sayo ko na. Now, common name, as you can see, it's your rat lungworm. Nasa pangalan na because kinsi yung gina-infect your rats, okay? So your natural or definitive host are your rats, but uh, it also uses an intermediate host, and this time, yung intermediate host kay mga mollusks, slugs, and your snails. Ayan, so mga snails, slugs, uh, pila luzonica, or kuhol, and brosha aspirata, or suso, okay? Di siya suso, <laughs> suso, okay? All right, so intermediate host kay mga mollusks, uh, slugs, and snails. Infective stage is still filariform larva, and as you can see, for humans, we have different modes of transmission. The first one is ingestion of the intermediate host good, like snails and slugs, no? Accidentally ba, or na mga dishes na mugamit ana? Raw pa rin, or undercooked. Next is ingestion of parathenic host na raw, like mga fish, amphibians, reptiles, crustaceans, all right? And vegetables that, uh, in a way, gikaon ang, larva, uh, gikaon ang slugs or snails. And for vegetables, pwede ni agi ang, ang slugs or snails dito, all right? Yeah, and another one is of course drinking contaminated water. All right, so that's for Angiostrongulus cantonensis, your rat lungworm. Okay, because again, the natural or definitive host are your rats. Okay, sige. So that's for the important information. Say mo hang Angiostrongulus cantonensis. Now take note, adults very important lang. Take note, take note talaga distinct uh, description. Barber's pole appearance. Ako talaga. Basta ka na ganing word na barber's pole appearance ang nigawas na ko, press the buzzer na. That is androstrongulus cantonensis. Okay? So, barber's pole appearance in female because the whitish uterus nag-intertwine sila or it's looping, no? It's looping around 
your digested shrap na color red. So it's similar to a barber's pole appearance. Ayan, barber's pole. Kaya nang nasa gawa sa mga barber shop, di ba? So barber's pole appearance, nako, barber's pole appearance of female adults, Preza Bazar, Andrew Strongelos, Cantonensis. Okay, alright. Now the egg is elongated, ovoidal, and nandiyan po yung hyaline shells. So quite similar with your um, hookworm, yung appearance. Okay. Now, unimbrinated siya when oviposited. So, meaning, kailangan pa siya mo mature in the outside environment. Okay? So, again, barber's pole appearance. What you have to take note lang yun, barber's pole appearance. Kanat lang yun. Press the buzzer na. Angiostrongulus cantonensis. Barber's pole appearance. Angiostrongulus cantonensis. Okay. All right. Now, if we go now to the life cycle. So, in the rats, as you can see, the adults, okay, they reside in the pulmonary arteries. Okay? Sa pulmonary arteries and sa heart. Okay? So, nasa lungs. All right? Now, once they are mature, all right, or once they are, uh, once they mate, all right, they produce, um, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, uh, the, the adults, they, sorry, the adults, again, will produce eggs, all right, and uh, of course, from the eggs, mugawas ang first stage larva, okay? Now, the first stage larva will go out in the environment, kaysa feces man, makaon siya sa mukhang snail or slug. Now, inside the snail or slugs, again, dito na mo, um, mubalik, no? or mature into L3 filariform larva. Now, the L3 filariform larva, of course, which is atong makuha, uh, humans, no? Again, possible ingestion of the slugs or snails, all right? Or possible uh, contaminated produce, such as, again, your vegetables or other parathenic hosts like fish or reptiles, okay? Nagikaon ang slugs or snails. Now, as now inside the body, sa humans, the larva na makaon, they have a predilection or ganahan sila or mumigrate sila padulong sa brain. Ayan. That's why it causes cerebral angiostrongyliasis. Alright? Okay. And possible po na mabot siya sa lungs pero po sa eyes. Alright? Ayan. And this larva inside the body dili sa produce or dili sa mo uh, mahimong reproductive. No? Dili sa mo uh, reach o reproductive maturity. So dili sa lang makaproduce og eggs. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So that's for the life cycle of angiostrongyliosis cantonensis. So sa rats mismo yun, makomplete ang life cycle. Okay? For humans, again, accidental ingestion lang, all right, of the slugs or snails, all right, or again, contaminated produce such as vegetables or katong mga paratenic host, okay? And once inside the body, the larva will migrate, especially to the brain, and can involve also the eyes and the lungs, okay? Now, we go now to symptoms and pathology. Again, another very important feature and characteristic, your eosinophilic meningoencephalitis. So, angiostrongylus cantonensis, Again, causes eosinophilic meningoencephalitis. So, ayan, na natay, na na complete na mga meningoencephalitis sa para. Ayan. So, again, starting first with the primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. Kinsa ganin ang cause ato? Primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. Negleria foliary. Okay, very good. Negleria foliary. And ang cause sa secondary amoebic meningoencephalitis. Antangiba histolytica. Okay, and tambi basilitika, yes. Muna yung gitunan ka ron. And then your granulomatous amoebic encephalitis, your? Acantamiba. Okay, acantamiba species. And last, to complete the four, you have eosinophilic meningoencephalitis, and that is caused by angiostrongulus cantonensis. Nakupress the buzzer na good. So, katong upat na mga meningoencephalitis ha, sa para, take note of that, no? You have primary amoebic, PAM, which is negleria foliary, SAM, secondary amoebic meningoencephalitis, which is again, entamoeba yosolitica. Granulomatos, amoebic encephalitis, GAE, is your acanthamoeba species. And then, of course, eosinophilic meningoencephalitis, preso buzzer, angiostrongulus cantonensis. Nako, four points na yun. No? Baka lumabas ang four points. Lisod na. Okay? Alright, so take note of that. Because again, as mentioned, the larva will migrate to the brain and spinal cord. Again, it causes eosinophilic meningoencephalitis. So, nasa pangalan na, the CSF uh, contains increased eosinophils, all right, and increased po na WBCs. All right. Now, main, main symptom among patients that are affected by this is severe headache. Aside from that, there are neurological symptoms like um, weakness of the limbs, paresthesia, vomiting, constipation, nausea, anorexia, facial pa paralysis, neck stiffness, and also fever. Eye involvement, pwede po siya maabot sa eye, uh, is characterized by visual impairment, uh, pain, possible retinal hemorrhage, and retinal detachment. And in most cases, the disease is self-limiting na naman, and the patient can recover within a month, all right? But again, it's best that we diagnose it as early as possible, especially that there is brain involvement and eye involvement 
to, to prevent further damage to these organs. Okay? All right. Ayan. So that's for Androstrongulus cantonensis. Okay. Now, lab DX, of course, as you can see, uh, peripheral eosinophilia and increased eosinophils in your CSF. Lesions in the brain if magsitis kanta. All right. And of course, ELISA for serological tests. Treatment of choice is mebendazole, all right? Azos pa rin. And uh, as you can see, the tail of the larva of your androstrongulus cantonensis, there is a projection. So, na siya to look na projection, okay? Sa iyahang tail. That's characteristic of the nematode, okay? So, androstrongulus cantonensis, again, causes cerebral androstrongulysis. What we have to take note, again, barber's pole appearance. Nako, preso buzzer gear. Barber's, uh, barber's pole appearance in the female adult, preso buzzer, androstrongulus Cantonensis. And another one, eosinophilic meningoencephalitis. Nako talaga. Nako, nako. Ang daming mga pwedeng itanong. Charot. Ayan, okay? Eosinophilic meningoencephalitis. Alright. And the last nematode for today, alright, and the last species of angiostrongulus, it's angiostrongulus costaricensis. Now, this time, iyahang ikos kay abdominal angiostrongulysis. So, same with angiostrongulus cantonensis, it's common among rats, the cotton rat and the black rat. And this time, ato siya makuha still the same from ingestion of mga vegetables, especially salad that is contaminated uh, with slugs or snails. Sa uh, giagian, no? Giagian si mo mga slugs or snails. Alright? Filariform larva pa rin, same lagi siya with Angiostrongulus cantonensis. But the difference lang is that once ingested, sa imuha siyang intestine mukosog infection. Abdominal, Angiostrongulysis. So the larvae will create inflammatory lesions in the wall of the intestine, causing inflammation, necrosis, vomiting, and diarrhea. And very, very important, ito talaga naka-color red, patient experiencing symptoms or patient experiencing this disease has pain, okay? Iyahang pain similar to the pain manifested in appendicitis. Nako, ito, uh, yes. Uh, I think board exam recall, delete uh, during our time, but previous board exam, ang question kay, uh, the pain experience in this uh, disease, parasitic disease, is manifested or similar to that manifested in appendicitis. Nako press the buzz. Or it is your parastrongulus or androstrongulus costaricensis. Basta ang pain daw kay similar at ang pagbiya sa mong ex di mo charot. <laughs> Kung pain daw kay similar sa appendicitis, nako press the buzzer. Androstrongulus costaricensis. Okay? All right. Ayan. And eggs usually are seen in tissue sections, no? Uh, seldom siya makitan sa stool, alright? Uh, so, more more on histological ato uh, uh, diagnose. Androstrongulus, costaricensis. Again, what we have to remember, pain, okay, pain, pain, ayan. Pain is similar to that manifested in appendicitis. Nakumudyo na tong key description. Pain, similar manifest, pain that is similar uh, in appendicitis. Okay, please take note. <laughs> alright? That's androstrongulus, uh, Costaricensis. Okay? Alright. And uh, that's the end for today. Yes. Alright. For our lecture for today. Again, before we end, before we leave, uh, do you have any questions, dears? Okay. Medyo marami naman tayong na-chika ngayon. <laughs> okay. 